hello guys welcome back to another youtube video um my name is dola kwadu and i film about faith beauty and lifestyle and most especially i take you through my scholarship journey as an international student here in the uk If you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please kindly click that subscription um, button and if you're already a subscriber thank you so much for subscribing i want to say thank you to everyone who engaged with my last video um so many people said that it was helpful and you know i decided okay no i have to do more of this so for many of you that don't know um i'm studying a master's degree in the university of sheffield on a fully funded scholarship called the alan and nesta ferguson um charitable scholarship i decided to film videos with some of my classmates who are also on fully funded scholarships and today i have insikak who is going to be introducing himself shortly he's also on a fully funded scholarship and he's going to be telling us all about this scholarship so insikak you are welcome thank you so much thank you so much for you know agreeing to do this insikak yeah, sure. is a very busy <laughs> man guys so for him to be able to take out time to do this video i'm so grateful thank you so much so would you like to give us a brief introduction about yourself um what you're studying um what scholarship you're on and all of that okay i'm first thing first up here in nigeria and actually um, there's something you're going to know that she's whining me yeah but then anyways <laughs> that's actually by the way so my name is Isaac Kakabasi, um, samuel george i am from nigeria i'm a quiet bomb state precisely i am on the erasmus mundus um scholarship um which is actually funded by the european union and i'm doing the course um the european masters um in public health and i'm doing my first year at the university of sheffield and then i get to do an integration module at the um, french school of public health in Rhin, Breton, and wow. then the, um, the second year at the university jagelonski that's the jagelonian university in krakow poland yeah Wow, <laughs> guys, hey, God, bro. see, let me just give you guys one hint there. Eh? This collection that we're about to talk about, if you can get your hands on it, like when he's going to talk about the scholarship and you see what and you see what i'm saying that because this is actually a very good scholarship like you're literally paid not just to study but you're paid to travel <laughs> you're paid to travel as well fair enough fair enough fair ah, okay so my first question in yeah. sikak would be um can you tell us briefly about the erasmus mundus excellence scholarship what is it about this all right so um first thing first um this is this is a it's a joint masters um, okay. program um, that is what the scholarship actually covers that means that um, you get to so you're going to get um, two master's degrees so it's a dual master's mm. and then it's sponsored by the european union and then um there are over a hundred and i think 172 mm. programs wow. um on the erasmus mundus catalog um, which mm. like different programs agriculture public health okay. um just so many name the field as many as possible in forestry in the um, engineering as many mm -hmm. as possible um so there's different areas and then the thing is that um you get to study in at least two countries wow. myself i'm going to three actually <laughs> wow. yeah so you get to study in at least um two countries and um, at least two institutions mm -hmm. so i have colleagues who are who actually study in four different universities so like they get to spend like um semesters like a semester in each university mm. um so it it's it's a great um scholarship but uh, because it helps you um explore europe because like most of my friends are in central europe and in different places mm. um but for myself i'm in the uk actually and then later on i'm going to be going over to poland so hmm. that's just, god uh, when <laughs> god now god now god now <laughs> wow that's yeah. amazing thank you for that introduction so how did you hear about this scholarship because to be honest when i was applying for scholarships as well i i think i heard about this scholarship but i wasn't too sure what it was about but like how did you hear about it did you see it on google did a friend tell you about it like what was the story behind the whole um process of you you know applying okay and so before i'm going to um, talk about like um how i got to know about this I feel like um, as young people, um, if there's one site that you should always check out for opportunities, is the Opportunity Desk, which mm -hmm. is opportunitydesk.org. That is like your go-to places. Okay. Um, like if you want like any opportunity on scholarship, internship okay. and the likes, like that is one place that you can mm. always find this. For me, I think I I think I stumbled on it um, because um, one of my um, bosses at the time, he he got into the program in 2020 that's just during the pandemic 
okay. and then he just finished last year so i think i saw his post about it and then i so that was when i knew about the scholarship so that was like in 2019 so okay. that was the first time i knew about the scholarship and then in um 2022 i got mm -hmm. it and then i came over to the uk to study yep. wow wow amazing yep. so guys like he said um opportunity right yeah, i'm gonna okay, put the yeah. link in the description so that you can you know see um and then check it out basically so you can find other scholarships oh, yeah, there sure, as well. sure, oh sure, amazing yeah. so how many months did you use um to prepare for your application hmm. well actually um preparation actually it takes time you know I feel like sometimes, like, let me just say something practically. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when people see you, like, where you are, they're, they're like, oh, I want to be like you when we grow up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you, you get to forget that it takes a long time. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's just those building process over time, you know. Mm -hmm. At some point, it might not even look like very significant, but you could just be volunteering, you could just be doing internships. and mm -hmm. But then those things prepare you ahead of time for the opportunity ahead. Oh, yeah. Now, when I when I knew about the scholarship in 2019, at that time I was working with the current State Ministry of Health, okay, um, up north in, in north Nigeria, okay. and yeah, that was the first time I heard about the scholarship. But anyways, I was in the ministry, so what were we doing? Risk communication, surveillance, epidemiology, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I I also had like that passion too to learn and do things. So mm -hmm. I think like from 2019, you know, I just started just preparing like for wherever I was gonna be. Mm -hmm. So although although it was I think it was in 2021 that the picture actually got clearer that um I was gonna be going like for the scholarship. In fact, I I think I did apply in 2021, but I think I didn't get it. Oh, yeah, okay. and I think the thing that stopped me was because I had to write an IELTS, so it was compulsory to write oh, it yeah for the program. Okay. So um I didn't write it, and then I wasn't okay. selected. And everyone's like john is actually different. different for me for me for me the only scholarship i was allowed to apply for was the erasmus program i don't do what i did mm -hmm. according to my friends would be like no don't be like in <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah so that was brave yeah i mean like i had told myself that even if there were going to be two people i'm going to be one of them and it was it was it was just mad fit wow. <laughs> it was just mad fit wow. Yeah, because like I think for me, I started a lot of like scholarship applications, but I was just always restrained not to submit. I don't know why, I don't know how, but yeah, but this happened. So, but anyways, I prepared all this while. So while waiting, make sure that you're working. I think that's just what I'm gonna say. Mm. Yeah. Wow, well, you know that's actually interesting because when I was um when I was filming this video with Tapiwa yeah, yeah, in the yeah. last video, he also mentioned the same thing that he also didn't submit the order that it was just the chevening that he was yeah. just you know and that was it so guys see put your faith to work true, <laughs> honestly true, true. your agree, faith your agree, faith yeah. works wow that's amazing okay so um what are the eligibility requirements so for someone who is watching this video yeah. and says oh wow this scholarship is great i want to you know i want to apply and they are thinking ah but am i eligible do i need to have worked in so many places mm. do i need to have had years of experience right, do i need right. to have been the top you know person in my class like what are the eligibility requirements to be able to be you know eligible for this scholarship okay um i feel it's i feel it's a bit tricky because um the way you know i mentioned earlier that there are about 171 programs okay and the thing is that these programs are all different like they're all distinct mm. so there's no one size fit all because mm. each program has their own like requirements which might mm. be different from like others mm. although like there's still always like the common things you know like you have some years of experience let's say at least two mm -hmm. and then when they say years of experience it's not years of experience doesn't mean you know like formal work sometimes it could just be um maybe the volunteering things you do it's just it's just the way you present these things you know that really matter okay. you know i can actually sell myself you know i think i was speaking with a friend and then she said something she told me that Nasika, that she's actually able to sell salt to an earthworm i was like how has that <laughs> possible you know certainly that you know if if you put a salt where if, if you put an f1 where salt is certainly mm. that's you know it's gonna die mm. but just like you can market that thing to that f1 wow. and then the f1 is gonna buy it wow. <laughs> so i feel at the end of the day is the way you you know mm. in, you put out like your message out there mm. Mm. probably in your motivation letters and a couple of things but mm -hmm. still coming back to the eligibility criteria first off 
um, get an international passport. Let me tell you this one first off, get an international passport. You're still local. Mm. <laughs> you're, you're still local. You're still local until you have an international passport. Mm. And it is the earlier the better. Don't say, oh, you're not sure of traveling in the next mm, five years. That's true. Um, you need to ask. I got I got my passport in 2019, so that's the place of the preparation. <laughs> wow. So I got it in 2019 and I didn't travel until 2022. Wow. So but the thing is that you know it gives you that edge, it gives you that opportunity. Any mm. opportunity can come and then you have to move out, you know. Mm. So but having it is one thing to do as much as possible be building try as much as possible mm -hmm. to know what exactly you want to do and then build mm -hmm. get publications if you can okay. yeah because some programs it's quite necessary for me i wouldn't i don't know if the publication was an edge mm -hmm. but i feel as much as possible have it mm -hmm. and if you have conferences like let's say if you're in west africa for instance you know you can actually travel like across like the countries you mm -hmm. know in that region mm -hmm. and if there are conferences you can see just invest invest in yourself you know go for those things and then add them to like your resume and things like that it gives mm. you that edge and if you're still in school please i am begging you in the name of god get a good grade mm. please try as much as possible to graduate well we know you know there's there's that logic of oh school is a scam but school is not a scam forget those things that people <laughs> say school is not a scam as much as possible mm -hmm. get a good grade get a good grade i'm telling you it's really important um for my program i think most of the people that got in are just you must have a first class or a two one wow. so so that is like how low you can get is a two one like for my own program actually and i i feel like so i have a colleague she's currently in paris um she's doing a course on um, i think it's it's something um on on cyber security actually okay and so for her i think she had a tutu but what she did is she had to do a master's like she she did a master's in nigeria okay. uh then so like that gave her like an edge, an edge. to like apply for another mm, master's okay. degree okay. so please get a good grade mm. and then network with people mm. network with people is really important build your visibility that's like your you know like your online presence because mm. one thing that i've come to realize you know is that you know there are people that could say oh no you know i don't share things on social media yeah mm -hmm. i know that there are people that are actually introverted too as well there are people that you know they don't share too much but okay. as it relates to like the work you do mm -hmm. i would say if you're not so good with like using the social media mm -hmm. um you could like have like a drive like have like a drive like where you put like the things you do let's say oh you went for a conference you went for this work if you're not comfortable putting on social media okay. have those things in that drive Okay. because sometimes like on your cv you know you could add like those links you know and then mm -hmm. someone can actually verify because one thing i've also realized i'm an money person and then something in money is that if it's not documented it was not done mm -hmm. so if you tell me that oh you did this thing in this particular place and there's no evidence to show guy you didn't do it like mm -hmm. that's just the truth okay. so they need to see it somewhere somehow maybe on your linkedin post or okay. on your facebook or on your twitter you did that they can see they can verify Okay. And then also as much as possible, um, um, also you know the kind of information too that you put out too as well, like mm. on these platforms too as well. So yeah, build your LinkedIn profile, get a good grade, get your passport, get work experience. Yeah, one work experience, as I said, is not only until you work in a formal job, mm -hmm. you know, volunteering, mm -hmm. and then yeah, and then have it. That's it. Wow! Yeah. Wow, guys. That was that was actually very very exhaustive thank yeah, you so yeah, much sure, for that sure so um basically the thing is just that as much as possible we need just need to prepare ahead yeah, so yeah. for someone who is probably so what would you say for someone who is planning to apply next year and probably has not started any of this you know gathering their portfolio or going for conferences and all do you think they still have a chance okay so ah i i also forgot something um get your transcript yeah i mm. forgot that which is very important okay. it is really important because um i think that is also something i've qualified i'm disqualified a lot of people okay. because they didn't have their transcript okay. so the scholarship is going to open again this october and between oh, wow. now and, and then something also to mention like i said that different programs they have okay. different timelines too as well okay and programs are going to open in september okay. some in october some in december some in january and then they can open and just close in two weeks what 
Ja, so it's so it boils yeah. down to you to do now that's another thing you need to do research you need to do your own research mm. so like i said there are 171 of them you go on like the catalog i'm going to share the link with her okay and then you go on that catalog you check you know like maybe because like it has like this um provision for you to put like a keyword so you can put in the keyword let's say chemical engineering then it's going to give you like the courses that are related to that and then mm. you can now do your search on oh this course this course you would know the schools you're going to go and then even like with that, you're going to know like the countries where you're going, you're going to know what you have to be prepared for. Wow. And then um, the language too as well, because for some programs, language proficiency is compulsory. It's not something you can negotiate. Mm. Um, so like for my program, I'm doing the European Masters in Public Health. Some of my colleagues did their first year in Spain. And if you have to go to Spain, you have to speak Spanish. Mm. Yeah, so that is how it is. So you need to be proficient in Spanish to do your first year wow. there. And then for me, actually, I chose Sheffield. I can speak English. So yeah, that's why I am. <laughs> just choose UK. Yeah. Then in the second year, there are some people too. So there's also a, a track um, for French speakers. So okay. I think there's a course health promotion and then it's in rank. Okay. So if you have to do that, if, if, if like that's something that's interesting to you, okay. you have to learn French. I think it's like a B1 or B2 um, proficiency level that you have to get to. Wow. So for each program you need to know the program that you want to go for and then start preparing know the language if certainly that is required um for that particular course so language is there it is there's still time to learn like we are just in july this august this september mm. you can use duolingo you can actually sign up for a language class mm. and then you can actually get these things done you there are even courses on coursera or things like that that you could do which is going to give you an edge the conferences that are going to happen in these two months you can't tell me that oh hey, in this two months nothing's going to happen for you to like you know go for a conference or things like that it can also be like virtual conference it doesn't have to be like mm, physical, physical ones, ones. Okay. you know that is that is the beauty of what COVID 19 did to us mm. in our dispensation yeah, so yeah. i don't have to travel to Seattle. i don't mm. have to travel to spain i can mm. just be right here and then and do it. exactly so like right now and i'm reaching you wherever you are so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah so that's it too there's still time for you to prepare there's still time for you to yeah. um i think also something else is um make good use of your social media Okay. Um, that's one thing that's going to help you. So I have been like a part of a task force, like on the neglected tropical disease. And I only joined a task force because I was on Twitter and I was active, you know, talking about beating NTDs and things like that. And okay. then these are things that actually add like to like a part of the experience that I'm doing. Okay. And then like I published a paper, like one of our papers got published yesterday and it was from that task force that, you know, had people like from other African countries, you know, we came together and then we had like that publication you know someone seen that you know to see all those interactions and things that i do you know mm -hmm. and it's something you can always do it's it, it it's not so difficult identify key players in like where you're going if you know that wherever you're going is let's say you want to work in maybe um, a particular engineering firm look out for people you know that mm -hmm. are in that space connect with them have conversation follow them mm -hmm. you know reply to their posts things like that those are things that give you like that advantage and you can do that in two months mm. yeah yeah you can really do that in two months actually wow. the lab was said i was a busy person actually like <laughs> i have so many things actually planned out and i just work toward them in fact um in two weeks she knows the amount of things that i've been able to accomplish like in just two weeks yeah mm -hmm. because like we've been having conversation before now and uh still about a couple of things I need to finish up like before Friday. So yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So you you can actually do it. I feel like you just have to just have that um self belief first mm. that this thing is possible. Possible. And you can do it. Oh yeah, there's something about my name. So it means nothing is impossible. So wow. everything... I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So yeah, so it's so it's like something mm. I always go with. I do tell mm. people that nothing is impossible for mm. me if i want to do it and i put my mind to my do it i'm certainly gonna do it wow amazing yeah. guys that's an encouragement because i'm pretty sure like some people would have stayed where they were like they already decided oh, this is yeah. enough for me but honestly <laughs> the truth is that guys if you are ready to put the hard work yeah. and do yeah. your research and also you know watch videos like this who which is like that gives you more information about it yeah. there are so many sources online on yeah. youtube i remember when i was applying for my scholarship as well there was so i watched so many videos on youtube from people that are look, also applying for fully funded yeah. or applied and got it it's a lot of yes work and preparation but if you put your mind to look at Isikat now is traveling the world the amount of stamps 
on his passport, <laughs> brothers and sisters. But you see, he puts in that work and he's able to do this now. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Okay. So um, my next question would be, um, so what helpful tips would you get? I know you have talked about like how to prepare for the application. No, so now in terms of like your letter, your motivation letter, and all of that, when you now put together your application, what helpful tips would you give for someone that is now ready to apply after doing their preparation and research? Okay so for yeah i think like the motivation letter also like cut across like all the programs anyways because certainly you have to write a motivation letter okay. and the thing with the erasmus programs is they're not long they're just 500 or 600 words i think oh wow so okay. <clears throat> so that is where you have to really be you know that place of being outstanding uh -huh. mm -hmm. so that is where <laughs> yeah. because like you know at some point you know you want to realize that 600 words is really too small Mm. you know for you to convey everything that and maybe convince them exactly well. so but there's something that always really works it's the star approach i don't know if you've okay. maybe like heard about it so it's mm -hmm. the star approach so the situation the task the action mm -hmm. um the result and then probably a learning mm -hmm. so like there's that l now that have been added to that so mm -hmm. there was a situation let's say if you want to answer like, i think like this is something that helps you like answer any question even mm -hmm. if it's an it's in an interview, in an interview because yeah. like um in in the um, in the erasmus catalogs like the courses uh i think my program is the only one that doesn't have an interview oh really yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. the um european public yeah, yeah the european public so it doesn't have an interview but every other erasmus programs i am sure that they have an wow. interview yeah so that star approach still always stands out like say they ask a question also explain yourself what's your motivation to do this program you know first of all set a scene which is like a situation oh this this and this and this happened mm -hmm. this is the prevalence of this and this and this or mm -hmm. you're drawn by this you know that's like a situation already like that you've painted then the next mm -hmm. thing you do is the task so what was the next thing you had to do okay so like the task what was the task or oh, maybe to build this to do that mm -hmm. to maybe get this degree to do that mm -hmm. one and then mm -hmm. what's the action or oh, you actually studied mm -hmm. maybe you did a program okay. you you implemented this and mm -hmm. then what were the results that you got after that so okay and then it's important too as well to include numbers like include numbers because numbers you know help people visualize like see what you've done i don't mean you should lie <laughs> you know because there's actually that's a very thin line between like you know lying mm -hmm. and you know seeing what exactly you did mm -hmm. you know because you can always exaggerate but as much as possible try to be very realistic mm, okay be very realistic because one thing i noticed is people check yeah they will yeah. check they will know they're like oh, this one can be too too real too, to be true yeah. so you state the result what exactly were you able to do mm. you know what did you achieve out of that and then what did you learn mm -hmm. you know when you put those things together yeah it can be like 300 words and then you, you now talk about maybe the school the program mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. you know you've already said the scene which actually shows them you know the kind of person that you are mm -hmm. and then you now go ahead with the program why you want to do the program and then mm -hmm. what you hope to achieve and then there's something that i always say about um like if you're doing motivation letter whether in erasmus whether not in erasmus and there are a lot of you know scholarships mm -hmm. out there you need to tell them what you're going to contribute like give back to the program, the program. so mm -hmm. yeah because most of these guys they will see that you being selfish because you're just coming to just get without <laughs> giving anything back just want to travel <laughs> i mean like one thing that's really important is the place of knowledge sharing so maybe mm -hmm. sharing your experience mm -hmm. or you've worked in this kind of setting before you can yeah. bring that experience yeah. that diverse yeah. view that yeah. is really a lot like for for the program mm. and then you can also then talk about like your maybe long-term goal well, in five years in three years, years what do you mm. want to do so those are things that really work mm. and also for your cv because all the programs you're gonna um use a cv and i think for the erasmus mundus excellence scholarship and the programs um so they use the europass like the okay. europass is like the cv standard that you use for the erasmus okay so it's very different like from if you're applying for any other program mm -hmm. um so that is like the standard that they use for that and then you need to get acquainted with it and then know with like the things you have to put the things you don't have to put and then mm -hmm. even on your cv too as well you ensure that you also include numbers too okay. as well it's important so if like you're talking about a particular job role mm -hmm. um yeah so maybe like maybe like now like you're doing like a youtube you know you mm -hmm. talk about like the number of people that you've reached so reach you know five thousand mm -hmm. you do like maybe subscribers or people you know mm -hmm. so that number actually shows them that 
because there's something some people just put in their job description that's not what those people want they want to see mm. what you were able to achieve what did you do so i achieved this i led this i collaborated to do this mm. so you know you can even see yeah so you said what you did you include numbers too as well maybe 100 percent you can even put like numbers like my cv if you look at my cv you see like i did this you know i achieved this by 100 percent you know mm -hmm. i you know trained you put a certain number like the number should be there yeah, yeah so it it shows them that you are an achiever not just a doer, a doer. Ha, mm -hmm. so those are two different things <laughs> Keywords. Wow, wow, wow. Thank Keywords, you so yeah, yeah. Okay, so my next question now will be, so what has been your experience so far? Well, yeah, I know that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing this cat, I just give him, I think in the next one or two months, you're going to be out of the UK anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, so, sure, like, yeah. but what has your experience been so far yeah. as um, an Erasmus Mundus scholar? Okay, so for me, um, my friends would always say something. They said that in um, you went to the UK and you used all the opportunities you had to use. Mm. Yeah, so I feel like it's it's just something that um, I've always stood out for me. I was in Northern Nigeria, like I've been in the South. Mm. Going to the North was like, oh my God, like you want to go and get killed and things like mm. that. But I went there with an open mind. I went there to learn. Mm. I went there to walk. I went there to do things. And even before I left Nigeria, like a lot of people saw like what I did. So. Mm. Even when the scholarship came, be like, ah, no, we know not see cock, you know, gonna, it's see cock. It. <laughs> you know, my friends, like, like in my uni, is gonna say, ah, Sika, it's natural. Like, that's <laughs> that's the cliche word they would say, like, ah, Sika, it's natural. Mm -hmm. So, but then I feel like there are always opportunities out there, and then just make use of it. So, for me in Sheffield, like when I came here, um, the experience have really been good. In fact, I was in France, like in June and July, and then I really wanted Travel to come back to Sheffield. <laughs> I really wanted to come back to Sheffield because, like. I really miss Sheffield actually wow. and Sheffield is a very cool place although it rains all through the year yeah that is like a culture shock <laughs> <laughs> that's a shock yeah that's a shock for me so but it's been good and then also um, apart from just being a student I I was the academic representative that's the inclusivity I, I was part of the inclusivity working group Okay. Um, of um, of our faculty and then also I was the president of the public health society so I was doing many things I was doing many things oh so, yeah I was doing many things but I really use those opportunities too as well I ensured mm -hmm. that I engaged networked with people I went to conferences in like different schools I was in Bradford mm -hmm. you know attending programs online too it just helps you have that reach of people mm -hmm. meeting with people like um, the lab you know I used to call her kangaroo monarchy <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I used to call her kangaroo Okay, because she was really interested like uh, in that topic when we had a class one yeah. time so like, oh yeah that's good and then she actually shared it on her linkedin i was like yeah. oh wow <laughs> yeah so so it's so it's been wonderful so far for me and then like i've also really found like the environment helpful i feel like sheffield like because like yeah when sheffield it's it's a bit different from like other parts of like the mm -hmm, uk mm -hmm. south yorkshire is a very cool place like it's cool the people too as well are really good it's different from london oh my god it's really different from london yeah. it's different from manchester yeah. it's just south yorkshire south yorkshire <laughs> yeah so it's it's just cool it's just really lovely mm -hmm. and it's a place where you you meet like it's also very international too as well mm -hmm. like you meet diverse people from like different places mm -hmm. um you have pakistanis you have the indians you have mm -hmm. iranians mm -hmm. You know it's it's also like very multicultural so you can mm -hmm. just be in the uk too and also learn about different cultures, cultures. so it's it's also like really good mm -hmm. so so far yeah that's sheffield and then we're in france for three weeks because as part of my program we had an integration module um at the french school of public health mm -hmm. um in Rennes in Brittany, and it was it was good that three weeks it was very good experience meeting mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. but i feel like i'm um, at the end of the day we're all sad because we had to leave mm -hmm. because when you've connected with so many people mm -hmm. like we're about 84 of us and then you have to leave them some of them were graduating and they're like oh you're not gonna meet yourselves again people were crying i was like oh my god i can't I cry i can't cry i can't cry no i'm african i'm very african <laughs> <laughs> I'm very but anyways <laughs> anyways 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 that's that's by the way so mm -hmm. but then like it was a very good experience and mm. the good thing too was that the the people that we had like as the visiting professors were alumni of the program wow. so it was really wonderful to meet all of them like dr adura dr kaushik 
and so many people like from different institutions sarah so it was it was a great experience for me and i'm back to the uk and then i'm going to be going to poland and actually i've not learned any polish word yet mm -hmm. i think the only word i've learned is junkuya which is thank you okay uh, that's <laughs> that's <something. laughs> actually yeah it's it's yeah it's something anyway so mm. i think i'm gonna learn but then the course that i'm going for is um, it's gonna be taught in english so oh, okay i was gonna yeah ask exactly that, so it's gonna be in english so work? i'm just okay. gonna i'm just gonna only need um polish for like you know conversations with locals with people, if you're going yeah. to the tram if you're doing this and that yeah okay. but then maybe like maybe in, in like the local communities too as well mm. so but then to like the town that i'm or the city i'm going to um krakow is a very multi like it's it's very international so they have a lot of international students mm. they have erasmus student like from different part of europe mm. so and then yeah, yeah yeah so it's so i'll be fine certainly the way i was fine in kano nigeria so yeah <laughs> i'm gonna be fine there oh, as well. amazing so um i think this should be like one of my final questions yeah, so I know that I was talking with Tapiwa yeah. in the last video and he mentioned that the Chibden scholarship requires you to go back home mm. after one year. Okay. So is that yeah. the same with the Erasmus Mondays? Are you are you you know, are you supposed to or required to go back home after you finish your course or you can still, you know, stay in the UK or in Poland or wherever depending on the country you're going to be in? Okay, so um, when I was in Nigeria, they used to call me on Sikak of Africa and then I left and then I became Sikak of Sheffield. And then I went to France and then they called me in Sikak of Europe. So I will not go back. That's it. <laughs> so the Erasmus um, Mundus um, scholarship, um, so you you are not required to go back. So Okay, nice. Almost, I think like, it's just very few people that go back anyway. So but mm -hmm. majorly, a lot of people stay back in the eu so okay. and and i feel like you know there are, there are a lot of opportunities to like you know you can always assess like i think like the Marie Curie scholarship and then mm -hmm. like for a phd and then mm -hmm. and you can also get like resident permit mm -hmm. as well like my my friends going to like france netherlands um yeah like in in september mm -hmm. yeah so they have access to that I, I think even all over like the eu like you know you have that like so it's just once you're done or even before you're done you just have a think around or where you want to go but cool. yeah so mm -hmm. it's 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 up to you to decide anyways mm -hmm. there's no obligation mm -hmm. um but if you overstay in a country you know you mm -hmm. if if yeah so if you're gonna overstay in a country you need to like have gotten like the residence permits it's gonna allow you to stay so okay. but but for the program mm -hmm. and the program doesn't have any restriction like mm -hmm. on like you know if you have to go back to the country or not no, mm -hmm. it doesn't have that yeah. okay and then um the funding so the, it's a fully funded scholarship meaning yeah. that it covers the tuition for yeah. both universities yeah. so when it comes to the flights like you traveling your mm -hmm. accommodation mm -hmm. allowance living allowance is that also covered or is it just the tuition fee okay yeah so this is this is also something that i i did use to stress so the consortiums too are different like for the different programs about yeah 171 of them now i feel like for majority of the programs for majority of them what happens is this um before you leave let's say like if you're a nigerian before you leave like for your program certainly this there's, there's a pre-departure you have like um some links to like the the european union in nigeria mm -hmm. so like if you're going to like most of these countries they can help you like with the whole visa process but you're you are going to pay like so you're the one paying for like all your flights you're paying for like your accommodation like festing until you settle into the country and then when you get there you get a reimbursement like of everything okay. so but then there are some programs that actually do that for you so it's just mm -hmm. you you know checking in like with the consortium like you can actually send them emails actually to confirm yeah exactly to confirm like what you have to do because for me i did my visa myself i did the visa myself mm -hmm. i got an accommodation in sheffield myself i booked my flight myself okay. and then came over here so it was later on i think it was like 10 days after i arrived and then i got a refund Wow. like of yeah yeah of the money Amazing. and it was about i think almost like 2.1 million naira anyways yeah wow. yeah it was actually a lot of money though yeah but then like you get like a refund, a refund. like of of okay. of everything and then subsequent month to you also get like monthly allowance and then two is is also so more of like a survivor so just try to understand you know when you check in with the programs that mm -hmm. you know that suit you 
try to also check in like with the city that you're gonna be going or studying to also because some mm, cities are that. more expensive than yeah, the other so true. you know how you're going to adjust true. like with like the living cost and things like that true. because for like my program some of my colleagues that went to dublin like they were really they were like yeah. the money that they were getting wasn't really commiserate like yeah. to like sort out a couple of things accommodation and things like that yeah. So and they were like they wouldn't actually recommend people to go to Dublin because like it's expensive and not just Dublin like some other cities like so like if you're going to like Bonn Switzerland or if you're going to like some some other places maybe like in fin I think Finland or but actually like expensive cities you know mm. so you and even Paris too as well so you just know you need to put that into context exactly you just you just have that in mind um, when you're applying for the programs okay then. Um, something else to also state so the way the Erasmus Mundus joint master's program um, is structured so they have those on scholarship really so mm -hmm. like there are those that you know their fees are actually covered and then there are those who choose to be self-funded so mm -hmm. in our program too like we have those that you know they self-fund themselves and they're still a part of the program too as well yeah okay. so sometimes you might not make it to the list of those that are going to get a scholarship but, you, but you can get it like yeah cost. exactly so you can get like to the list of those who maybe um are going to be like self-funded okay. but the good thing is so like for us in sheffield um i think the tuition fee like for like the one year masters like mm -hmm. if you're doing like a one year you have to fund yourself i think it's in sheffield it's like i think twenty two thousand pounds mm -hmm. so but um with the with so being on the erasmus program i think you pay the home fee which is like eight thousand or six thousand okay yeah and then it's at at the long run because like i've had like conversations with my friends like who are like self-funded and then they're mm -hmm. like well you know looking at it looking at like the prospect and things it's even way cheaper than doing like mm -hmm. a one-year master's Master. degree so it still just also depends on what works for you if for you have you. the money mm -hmm. you know and you feel like okay you didn't get the scholarship you want to go for that i'm just making that mm -hmm. you know to just know that oh that option too is also it's, still it's available also, yeah. you still also travel around okay. you go to all these schools too as well yeah mm, okay. yeah right, and then. and then like so like i had a colleague so he's from thailand and then he came in actually self-funded but for the second year so he got a scholarship like um from his government like from mm -hmm. so like there's a thai mm -hmm. there's a thai france you know scholarship mm -hmm. which he has gotten now so mm -hmm. that so that's going to help him you know for like the second year, the second year. exactly okay. so he wouldn't have to pay for that because that is covered so he only mm -hmm had to cover for the first year mm. so there are still always scholarship options you know available. still like you, just need to you know available exactly so just know what works for like mm. the different programs yeah. wow amazing amazing so uh um, yeah. final question okay. in like one minute or even less what would be your final words of wisdom mm. to someone out there watching this video and is interested in applying or you know just not maybe not just for the erasmus mundus mm. but for fully funded scholarships in general because there are so many people that have been asking me yeah. you know they are really interested in doing this but they don't really know which way to go and they're not really so encouraged about it so what will be your final words final final words okay today? actually i just hope i don't do an exegesis but it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so i feel um one thing like i said just prepare mm -hmm. do your research see i i i will stress this one big time but the, you know there are people that reach out to you and they're like i want to apply for this i'm like mm -hmm. but the link is there on linkedin it, mm -hmm. you know like it's 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 there mm -hmm. like just a simple google search you know would yes. have like like given you these things yes. because sometimes one thing i've noticed especially like with my like other scholars and mm -hmm. people who also get scholarship you know mm -hmm. they get a lot of very funny questions mm -hmm. and i'm like you know and most of us we have other things especially like you know school work is mm -hmm. really demanding mm -hmm. you as a person you're thinking of how to do very well and then when you're getting most of these questions <laughs> what i'm just going to say is as much as possible do your research first before even reaching out like you know that's i'm talking more of like the place of if you have to reach out to people, people. you know that um are part of that program and please do do reach out to them actually but reach out to them when you've done your research, research yeah. yeah so don't reach out to them like how do i go about it there are links online yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know so i'm just coming from that point so just mm -hmm. um do your research mm -hmm. the erasmus catalog is there mm -hmm. you search for like the informations you mm -hmm. want they're all available out there mm -hmm. 
and then there are also a lot of links uh, a lot of youtube videos out there to like my sc fellow scholars you know i've done a lot of them so mm -hmm. do your research and then while waiting mm -hmm. while waiting make sure that you're doing something yeah make sure just just make sure you're doing something mm -hmm. you know um just be productive yeah there's a difference between being busy and being productive actually productive, so yeah. just ensure that what whatever thing you're doing is still just pushing you forward toward where you want to be mm -hmm. and if you got um if maybe like you've gotten a rejection letter before or something well actually i do call it a love letter mm -hmm. um you just go again yeah so you don't you don't just give up you know give up, yeah, yeah you don't it. just you don't just give up about yeah. it yeah sometimes now what i've come to notice is not that you are not qualified you know mm -hmm. for it it's like the criteria that they have in place now mm -hmm. one thing i noticed like with my program is the currently the way the funding goes now they give um a lot of preference to people from the balkan countries mm -hmm. And then maybe they can have like a quota of like maybe male and female people from like different regions mm -hmm. so you can be extremely good but if there's no funding to cover mm -hmm. for that country you will not be selected mm -hmm. so it so sometimes you can be very qualified mm -hmm. but their criteria can actually disqualify you. it's not that mm -hmm. you didn't meet all of them it's just oh, not good exactly so mm -hmm. it's just that they just have like those maybe like placings they're like mm -hmm. So what happened? So like in my program, there's um, some people wanted to change their specialization. They're like, oh, we don't want to go anymore to Poland. Oh, we don't want to go anymore to Netherlands. We want to go to Paris. And then the program was like, oh no, you can't go. Mm. Why? Because the way they've looked at the program structure, mm -hmm. they looked at the distribution of people and the distribution of the countries too Country. as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you have African. So you know, you have African, you have Asian, you have Southeast Asian, you have the Balkan. So it's not be good to have like a lot of people from a particular a region particular, and then yeah. disadvantage the other to ones. To be unfair. You get so, mm -hmm. so they have those things which you will not see them on, you know, their eligibility criteria, mm -hmm. but those things are actually there. Mm -hmm. Those are things they also use like to make decisions. So sometimes it could be that maybe all the people in Nigeria, let's say for instance, the most qualified people, the three of them are females now for equity they would take the the closest male mm. that's really close and put him there and then make it two and one or as yeah, the case may be mm -hmm. so you maybe you were here and then you thought that oh well yeah you should have been taking your more qualified than this person it doesn't mean you know so they looked at it they're like okay we've had two females you know who are like very good so we need to have a male to balance it up mm -hmm. I don't know if you like get like the picture so so that is also something that also happens like with most of this scholarship so and i'm sure it's not really peculiar to erasmus i feel like every other scholarship also has like those things you know so don't feel like you you know you didn't make it it's just yeah. because sometimes those things are there which you don't see mm -hmm. but like the board makes those decisions, those decisions. yeah so you can always try again. exactly yeah so you can always try again and then there are a lot of scholarships like mm -hmm. there are so many so it's not it's it's not a do or die if you don't have the erasmus you know there are different other scholarships like options there are mm -hmm. many mm -hmm. but like i would always say it's just a place of just making your research because research. that is really important like i have been able to find like a lot and i'm like mm -hmm. wow i never even saw that you know most of these programs actually mm -hmm. even existed but mm -hmm. they are there so if you just make that research you will certainly always find them mm -hmm. and have faith mm, yeah i will stress this one as mm -hmm. much as possible because you know sometimes we tend to do things we feel oh yeah we do a lot yeah i really believe in god like i strongly strongly so i i also feel there's also the place of you know having faith, faith. yeah having faith it is really i will tell you it is really important now mm -hmm. in fact i feel like i was just i just wanted to talk about like you know like a major culture shock you know that i had like you know like coming to the uk mm -hmm. you know when you come over here like you notice that you know people are really individualistic you know you don't really mm -hmm. see people in groups and then once you come here if you are a muslim identify with the mosque if you are a christian go to the church mm -hmm. because as much as possible these groups are going to help you like in times when you're feeling oh you don't have mm -hmm. people around mm -hmm. those are like the closest people like to you so try as much as possible to be in our community and then yeah certainly if you're in our community you have it so 
Yeah. Faith works. Wow. Faith works Amazing. always. <laughs> Amazing. Thank yeah, you faith does. so faith does much work. for yeah, that. Yeah, Thank sure, you sure, so sure, much. Sure. So um, disclaimer, guys. Um, whatever we are sharing in this video is based on our own personal views yeah, yeah, and sure, experiences. Sure, yeah. So as much as possible, do your own research. Yeah. Go on the website. You know, check the links I'll put in the description, and also do your own. You know, broad research as well to find out more information about this scholarship and other scholarships out there, so that no one will come and say, "Oh, Insikak said this." Is it is saying from his own yeah, personal yeah. view? What actually worked for me anyways, exactly, yeah. and what worked for him. Yeah. So please do your own research as well. I'm um, through the link. So Isika, I want to say thank you so much. Ah, uh, Mexico Wow, that's been like guys. When I say Isika is a busy man, is a busy man. So for him, we're all busy. Actually, we're all busy. <laughs> for him to actually you know, take fine. out the time, I'm so grateful. Thank you, and I'm sure so many people that are watching this video would also be grateful for oh, yeah, sharing sure, this. Sure. Honestly, so guys, if you enjoyed this video. Please and please like, subscribe. share, subscribe. and subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe is very important. Yeah. Though. This will encourage us as well to you know do more videos. And I just want to say thank you for watching. Although it's a long video, but I believe that it's you know it's it's impactful. Yeah. And if you if you have watched it to this very end, well done. Kudos to you. We wish you all the best in your application. And um, Isika, can I put out your details so that they can reach out to you? Yeah, sure, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'll put yeah. out Isika's details as well. So but then also something. Ah, sorry. Something I need to add. Don't feel intimidated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you know, like let's say, like oh, you know, you connect with people on LinkedIn, or and you're like ah, these people have done this many things. Mm. Please, mm. please, don't ever, mm. don't ever. I'm. It's, it's also a disclaimer. Okay. So everyone, you know, has their path, and everyone has that journey. So you will, you will get to your own peak. Yeah. Uh, so, but just appreciate where you are at the moment, at the moment and just keep building. Yeah. I just have to say that she actually understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then thank you so yeah. much. Thank so, you so guys, much, yeah. um, please, like I said, like, share, and subscribe. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Isika, thank you once again. Thank you so much. Um, I wish you a safe trip <laughs> to um, Poland. <laughs> yes. 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 All right then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>